The village of Froyle stands high above the Way Valley, between Farnham and Alton in Hampshire. It takes its name, so it's said, from Freya, the Norse goddess of love and fertility. My name is Jan Dubroy, and I'm the vicar of Froyle. This is our church in Upper Froyle. On the other side of the hill is Lower Froyle. Every June, a thousand National Garden Scheme visitors can usually enjoy tea and delicious homemade cakes in the village hall. But sadly, not this year. This is lockdown year. So, we decided to make this film to give you a glimpse into the gardens and show you what the gardeners of Froyle have been up to over the last 12 months. We hope that next year you'll be able to visit again and we look forward to welcoming you to our lovely village. Is there a finer rose to greet your visitors than Buff Beauty in full flower? It has thoroughly enjoyed the sunniest May on record and blooms to perfection. It's just a pity we cannot convey the scent. Mark and Sue moved to Lower Froyle in 2013. The half acre garden was a neglected tangle of fir trees which had to be removed. There remained a boundary hedge of mature shrubs and trees which provides a lovely backdrop and screens the rear garden from the lane. Sue does the plants and remembers their names, including more than 30 varieties of rose, a real feature of the garden. Mark does the heavy lifting. A good deal of structural work has been undertaken to carefully divide the garden into different areas. A formal central avenue takes advantage of the view to the north with themed flower beds on either side and plenty of framework for roses to climb. This is the hot border. A wild flower meadow with plenty of oxeye daisies doing well this year. This year the pond has undergone a major renovation and despite the upheaval the wildlife has returned abundantly and appears to approve of the new accommodation. A common newt, a female broad-bodied chaser lays her eggs while a male rests in the sunshine. Damselflies, water boatmen, and a toad, who's rather camera shy. The orchard is proving more problematic, with some of the young fruit trees struggling to establish, but the ideal place for keeping bees. A local beekeeper collects his honey. There is still room for vegetables. His and hers greenhouses. A new use for an old stepladder. A fruit cage, bursting with summer delights to come. And industrial scale compost bins. A high wind from the west threatens to blow away the garden at Warren Cottage. This is a long established garden and over the years much loved by NGS visitors. Gillian and Jonathan came here in 2006. They began a process of carefully reducing the mass and weight of some of the trees and shrubs, letting in the light and replanting the borders. The soil in Froyle is flinty clay sitting on chalk. It's fertile and moist and a plant that does well, does really well.
Pyrenees, for example, blooming this year two weeks earlier than last year. Siberian iris. Gertrude Jekyll, the country's favourite rose, perfectly displayed against old brickwork. Snow on the mountain. And the papery cistus, or rock rose, standing up well to the wind. It comes from the Mediterranean and conditions are currently ideal. This shrub rejoices in the name Colvitia amabilis, pink cloud. It's Jonathan's pride and joy. Now he's worked out when to prune it. Like many of the Froyle Gardens, there are beautiful views across farmland which change constantly. This old barn is a lovely place to sit and admire the view. This is where the wonderfully named Aquila Clapshoe made cricket bats in the first half of the 18th century. So expertly made were his bats that every cricketer wanted one. Visitors to Day Cottage always get a surprise when they pass through the garden gate. From the lane, nothing much can be seen. The cottage is well hidden. Even residents don't know it's there. Arable fields used to extend right up to the end of the cottage. But at the millennium, Nick and Corinna bought approximately a quarter of an acre of land, mostly headland. With the new land came bindweed, cooch grass, cow parsley, alcatel and creeping buttercup, all of which is impossible to eradicate, so they continue to share the garden. Planting is dense, where only the fittest survive. This is a truly wild garden, which just manages to stay on the right side of chaos. Climbing roses do well. This is Eddie's Jewel, one of the first to flower. The catalogues suggest a height of eight feet. Eddie has other ideas. The asparagus bed is still productive, but is being progressively invaded by self-seeded alliums on the one side and verbascums on the other. Asparagus requires patience. You have to wait three years but cooked fresh from the garden, it's delicious. The meadow is a feature of the garden, linking the garden with the views beyond. The meadow is always cut in September and the aftermath removed and composted. Gradually the fertility is reduced and the grass weakens so the flowers can flourish. A small wildlife pond provides home for all sorts of creatures. Solar panels are used to move the water. It's hard work getting round all the gardens in Froyle. But the one thing about Day Cottage are the number of places to sit and look and perhaps doze off to the sound of the insects. Sometimes, the plants have got there first. Sitting and looking, according to Nick, is the really crucial part of gardening. Though I wonder how he ever finds time to do that, with so much vegetation to control, single-handed. If you have a stream, you need a lake for it to flow into. And if you have a boathouse, you should have a boat. 
After many years of looking out over a neighbouring orchard, Nigel and Julie were finally able to acquire it in 2010. Now they could make their dream come true. In Froyle, there was plenty of inspiration to help them and plants to acquire. Locals will recognise this iris. A native hedge was planted along the boundary echoing the hedge on the horizon. No fish are allowed in the lake. This is strictly for the wildlife. The koi have their own home. Another project was to construct a combined lean-to greenhouse and potting shed. Julie's collection of succulents. I suspect it's just got going. Insects beware! The vegetable garden, sheltered by long-established espalier fruit trees. There are four substantial raised beds. The ideal height if you have a bad back. Ruby chard. Cook the leaves and the stems separately. Nothing for the birds here. The garden has kept Nigel and Julie very busy for the last 10 years. There's plenty of space. No doubt there will be more projects to come as the garden continues to grow. No one knows the variety of rose which covers Glebe Cottage or who planted it. Michael and Barbara call it after the name of a previous owner, Mrs Egerton Short, or Mrs Short for short. Visitors to this tiny garden have to queue to get in, but it's worth it. It shows just how much can be achieved in a small space. A water feature. The much loved water carrier. There are plenty of places to sit and enjoy the dappled shade. It benefits from a towering silver birch tree which Mrs Short was told would only grow to eight feet. It was all created on the site of a double garage. Planting is mainly in pots and provides an opportunity to appreciate in detail the colour, form and texture. The house is named after a village in Botswana where Jane and Alan spent a never to be forgotten holiday. Jane runs a busy veterinary practice but still has time to tend her immaculate garden. It's very sheltered and a haven for wildlife. Jane loves metalwork. She devised this obelisk with the help of a local craftsman. The rose is bridge of size. But the big draw in Jane's garden is her chickens. Unusually, they live in the front garden. Tucked away nearby is another treasure, Viburnum Kilimanjaro Sunrise. At the virtual Chelsea show this year, it won the People's Choice for Plant of the Decade. Let's hope the chickens don't get it. We're back in Upper Froyle, in the middle of a new development of houses built on the site 
of the Lord Mayor Trelaw School. In 2017, Bernie and Vonnie bought number three Burnham Square before the builders had finished constructing it. Yes, this garden is less than three years old. The first challenge was to deal with the plot, which sloped quite steeply away from the house. Having lived in France, Bernie knew all about terracing. The design and choice of planting is all Bernie's handiwork. The olive tree makes a beautiful centrepiece and a reminder of a previous life. Of all the gardens we visited, this had the most active bird life. But the birds would keep excavating in the borders. So Bernie covered them with stones, but not just any stones. Although the design for the garden and the planting is very formal with not a stone, as it were, out of place, Bernie has found room for a potting shed, a small greenhouse and planters for vegetables, which is all delightfully domestic and just as well thought out and executed as the rest of the garden. Bernie and Vonnie love their new home in Froyle and are putting down roots and planning for the future. A final surprise for the NGS visitor is the one hole golf course. Three balls for a pound. All proceeds to the NGS. Visiting all the gardens in Froyle in one afternoon is not for the faint hearted and we can't offer you the usual tea and cakes but you wouldn't want to miss Old Brewery Cottage. John and Vivian moved here in 2009 and undertook a complete renovation of house and an old but very overgrown garden. Vivian's taking advantage of the lockdown to redesign some of her borders. And you can be sure this wonderful garden will be even better next year. Froyle Gardens have a lot to offer the visitor. There's always plenty to see and ideas to take away. Lakes and ponds, wildlife and chickens, meadows and wildflowers, peonies, roses, curious outbuildings with interesting histories, statues and structures, fine views, not to mention the golf course. This is the kitchen garden. During lockdown, Vivian and other Froyle gardeners have been working hard to propagate plants which they can sell to raise funds for the NGS. The best seller has been Heritage Tomatoes. To date, combined plant sales have topped a thousand pounds. Looks like John is getting a nice green salad for lunch. We hope you've enjoyed this tour of Froyle Gardens. We hope it will encourage you to donate to the NGS this year and come and see us next year. By giving to the National Garden Scheme, you're supporting some of the UK's vital nursing and health charities. In 2019, together, NGS donated three million pounds. This year it will be much less. Please help us make up some of that difference. Thank you.